Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Holy and righteous God, you created us in your image. Grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us like those of generations before us who resisted the evil of slavery and human bondage in any form, in any manner of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among people and nations everywhere. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 65, beginning with verse one. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoked me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps, their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions, thus says the Lord. As the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake, and not destroy them all. I will hire forth descendants from Jacob, and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> but you, O oh Lord, be not far away. Oh, help hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword. My life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of wild animals you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise, and all you of Jacob's line, give glory. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. 
From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will the Lord, my God, I will sing to you, to fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise, may your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the family of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord. Who rules over the nations? Second reading is from Galatians, beginning chapter 3, beginning with verse 23. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our dis disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you were all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let us burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Alleluia, Lord, we sing for the good news that we bring. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived in the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. Then the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The gospel of the Lord. You. you may be seated. Say their names. 
This weekend, the Coos History Museum is hosting the Coos Bay Juneteenth celebration. If you haven't checked out their activities, I encourage you to do so. And I think the admission is free through today. Is that correct? Yes. So check it out. Yesterday, Dan and I attended the Beaver Hill Mine Historical Marker Dedication, recognizing the diversity of the mine workers, particularly the black miners recruited under misrepresented employment terms, and reflected on the greater picture of racism in Oregon's history. Today is Juneteenth, a day of celebrating the freedom extended by the Emancipation Proclamation when it finally reached all of the slaves. It's also a day to reflect on the continued racism and violence. Locally, we remember Alonzo Tucker and we say his name. In the church, the greater Christian church, we remember nine black people shot during their Wednesday Bible study at an African Methodist Epi Episcopal Church in 2015. The shooter was a racially motivated member of an ELCA congregation. A confessional litany and lament commemorating these nine written by the ELCA. They were doing what we are called to do as they engaged in Bible study. It was Wednesday night, a stranger walked in and these people welcomed him and prayed together. The Reverend Sharonda Coleman Singleton, Cynthia Marie Graham Hurd, Susie Jackson, Ethel Lee Lance, the Reverend DePayne Middleton, Tawana Kiwi Diop Sanders, Reverend Daniel Lee Simons, the Reverend Mira Singleton Quarles Thompson, the Honorable State Senator and Pastor of the Church, Reverend Clementa C. Pinckney. This stranger wanted to ignite a race war, he said after he shot and killed them, denying them the very humanity he claimed for himself, claiming rights and privileges associated with whiteness we are grieved once again in pain, burning and anguished, lamenting the horror of evil unleashed. And we cry out, have mercy, O oh God, have mercy on us. And we say their names. The man that we meet in our gospel text this morning, this man haunted to the point of living in a Gentile graveyard, naked and covered in scars from his chains. Jesus responds to this man, seeing his humanness as no one else has. What is your name? But the man is so lost, so overpowered by this host of demons, he can no longer tell what is him and what is demon. And so he responds, Legion, which is not his human name, is a Roman term. And in the Roman world, Legion meant a unit of 6,000 Roman soldiers, the Romans being the occupying army. And suddenly the social and political situation arises in front of Jesus. The Reverend Dr. Judith Jones writes, when the man confronts Jesus, Luke uses a verb that he employs elsewhere of armies meeting in battle. When the demon seizes the man, that's a verb used elsewhere when Christians are arrested and brought to trial. The words for the hand and foot chains for binding and guarding are the same ones that Luke uses in Acts when the disciples are imprisoned. In short, the language of this whole episode evokes the experience of living under brutal occupying power. So in this passage from Luke, 
an individual man is restored to society. He is freed from the demons that drive him away from abundant life as a member of the community. What are the demons that prevent us from remembering our identities as beloved children of God? What are the demons that get in the way of enacting God's justice and peace in the world? What are the demons that make you doubt your worth as a human? The demons ingrained so deeply in us that we forget who and whose we are. What are the demons that make us doubt the worth of another human being? Because Jesus, God incarnate, liberates all. And we claim things like, God is love. And if this is true, that love is for every person, every being, every creature, all of creation. The demons that come between us, destroying human relationships, leading humans to destroy other humans. Jesus is driving these away. Amart Luther, the monk that started the Reformation and who's responsible for the Lutheran church, wrote of how when he felt afflicted by the devil, he would yell, I am baptized. In other places, he also wrote about driving the devil away with laughter and with the breaking of wind. At the same time, as we talk about the restoration of individuals, this is also a political passage. Jesus is confronting the political powers that oppress. Yep, Jesus gets political. When it comes to issues of justice, Jesus gets involved. When it comes to issues of justice, The church has a responsibility to take a stand for the poor, the oppressed, protecting the vulnerable. Even, especially, when that means standing up against violence, gun violence, standing up for women's rights, trans rights, gender-affirming care. It means owning our missionary history of violence trusting in God's promise of forgiveness, freed from our own demons in order to set others free. And so we celebrate the end of slavery. We recognize that it took two and a half years from the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation to reach all people who were enslaved. Two and a half years. When we celebrate Juneteenth, we recognize that we have a long way to go yet before the demons of racism have been fully driven out of us, individually and systemically. Though we celebrate pride this month, we recognize the demons of homophobia and transphobia that linger, preventing God's beloved people from being free to live their true identities. When Jesus asks, what is your name? He is asking about your identity, the real you, that you that you don't feel like you have to hide, the you that's not hindered by fear or risk or threat of violence, the you in which God delights. There is no longer Greek or Jew, free or slave. And in your baptism, Jesus calls you by your name. Amen. Our hymn of the day today, My God, How Wonderful Thou Art, 863 in your hymnal.
I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we confess our faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. God, in your mercy. You hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement resources, sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. God, in your mercy. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all forms and especially white supremacy. Bring true form and human flourishing to all your beloved children. God, in your mercy. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick. Today, we especially pray for Marilyn, Ian, Judy, Julie, Kathy, Tom, Jeff, Jamie, Dick, and those we now name silently or aloud before you. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. God, in your mercy. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. 
Comfort those who for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God, in your mercy. We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them. Today we remember especially Dorothy. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God, in your mercy. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us turn to one another, sharing signs of God's peace.
Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here, all who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come, and you may be seated. Oh. 
All are welcome at this table. All are welcome to partake in this meal. Those of you at home, you're welcome to use any wine, grape juice, or bread you have on hand. And those of you here who picked up your little cup on the way in, if you haven't, if you need to run back and grab one, we'll wait for you to do it. Um, I invite you to take your cup, open the side with bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Turn it over to the side with wine or grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. The God who surrounds us, the God who walks with us, the God who blows through us and unites us, go out with us, giving us light and life, courage and peace. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is 789 in your hymnal, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Savior like a shepherd lead us, watch we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures feed us, for I your circle prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have brought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have brought us, we are yours. We are yours in the befriend. of our way, keep your flock from sin defend us, when we go astray, blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray, blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, children when we pray. You have promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. You have mercy to relieve us, praise to cleanse and part to free. Blessed Jesus, Blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to you. Early let us seek your favor, early let us do your way. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fail. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. <laughs>